Joining us now in studio uh, just to talk about the IEB results, Health Makar College uh, Top 2 2022 matriculants Ryan Sneiman and uh, Michaela Stahl. We're also joined via Zoom by Masana Palela from Blue Hills College. Congratulations to all of you and welcome. Thanks for coming through. Thank you for having us. Ryan, what, well, how does it feel? It feels strange. You know, we, we wrote these exams about two months ago and now it, it just reminded us of all the hard work we had to put in for five years when, when we've already started our adult lives, yeah. so to speak. A lot of hard work that went in and uh, just how was that? Did it, did it feel like, you know, this is one step towards your dreams or was it a burden? I must say sometimes it felt like a mountain lying in front of me, the final ex um, exams, but to me i had such a such a great support system so yeah. it went very well and i'm very grateful for for the journey actually yeah. yeah i'll ask you later about the overall average result from your particular school although the ieb result is 98 percent uh generally in the country but masana let's bring you in your name means many sunsets uh, where well, sun rises, I think. Many sun rises. Sun. Is is this the sun rising? Yes. Is this the sun rising on your future? <sighs> yes, it feels like the sun is rising on my future. It's very unbelievable, but I must say I'm proud of myself given the year I had. But I'm very proud. What do you mean, given the year you had? How many? Uh, uh, just take us break down your results for us. How many distinctions did you get? Um, I got three distinctions and a few 70s. So it was between the distinctions and the 70s. Yeah, that's totally awesome. Guys, just break down your results for us. Uh, I, I achieved 13 distinctions with 12 subjects because... Uh, Sorry, say that again. I think you made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> no. 13. Yes, yes. Uh, so, wow. So, uh, this year I still so, uh, started um, seeing further studies mathematics as two independent yeah. subjects. So uh, I actually had 12 subjects and I um, uh, achieved a distinction in all of them this year. Wow. Can we just give that <laughs> a round of applause? And? Um, I achieved um, 10 distinctions. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So I also had advanced program maths and I'm very happy with the results. I imagine there are people watching us now, Michaela, who are getting into metric and they're wondering, how does one achieve such a feat? I think the key is it's just consistency, really um, hard work, because in metric you get so ma many projects and tests and everything. So just to start immediately and maintain a very good balance between working and also just enjoying your metric year. Yeah. yeah. Ryan, when you achieve 13 uh, uh, distinctions, mm. It just begs one to ask about your entire schooling career. Has it, has, have you been consistent in that way, just in terms of your achieve, achievement that led to you actually registering for way more than the required number of subjects? Certainly not consistent in achievement, but um, consistent in aspiration, I would say. Yeah. Uh, since the very beginning, I, I wanted to um, do more, just a little bit more than I'm capable of as to continue pushing myself to improve. Yeah. And so I did. Um, even since grade nine, I took more subjects than the school actually allowed me to do. And I just continued to take new subjects, work harder than I, I, I thought I had to. And eventually I ended with 12 subjects. Awesome. So Masana, just in terms of the hard work, let's take our viewers into what that, uh, what that takes. Um, it takes a lot of you need to be resilient. You need to tell yourself that you're in metric. There's no time for anything else because in my school, we used to go to school Sunday to Friday. On Saturdays, I had extra math. So I didn't have time anymore. My time went all to school. During holidays, we were at school. So we didn't have time to actually be kids. We were matriculants the whole year. And I must say, if your mind is put into that and you don't focus on anything else, you'll achieve quite a lot because the school is giving you all the necessary resources by having your school all the time, having the teachers by your side throughout the year. So I think it just needs you to be resilient and you shouldn't succumb to pressure.
Ryan, so, I like the, what you were saying that you've got to have drive. Mm. So you're just saying, although you have a support system through your teachers and your parents, you've got to want this yourself. Uh, yes, but uh, of course, you know, you, the, the support system was fantastic as well. Um, uh, having strange requests like, uh, ma'am, can I take your subject this year at the beginning of, of grade 12? And them actually allowing you to do that and, and encouraging that um, uh, aptitude and, and p p pursuit of new knowledge, that's fantastic. So certainly it is an internal drive, but circumstance is also very, very important. Yeah. Michaela, d just in terms of the importance of support? Um, like I wouldn't have um, gotten through this year alone. I really had amazing teachers and they were always very willing to help me. Um, and just, I always asked for help. Um, I wasn't afraid to ask questions in class or go the extra mile because then the teachers reciprocate that. And also my friends and family, I, th I feel very grateful because without them, I don't think I would have been here. Yeah. yeah. Masana, yeah. What, what kind of support structures did you have? Um, I had support from literally everyone, all my siblings, my mom, the teachers, family. I had people checking in on me quite often and reminding me that this is the last push, so I just need to give it my all. So I must say my support structure was good. Yeah. One of the big questions in the country, um, and this takes it outside of your own individual personal achievement, is does it make a difference whether you go private or public? Uh, what are your thoughts on this conversation? Would, no, I <laughs> was in a private school myself, so I, I don't have experience with the public sector. Yeah. But I, I should think um, that it, uh, it, it, it's not so much um, how the school looks, it's about the teachers. You know, uh, fantastic teachers are not um, confined to schools with a um, uh, higher uh, demand in terms of finance. It, 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 it's, it's about the teacher body and the student body. If, if around you are people that strive to do better, teachers that encourage students to do better, it doesn't matter in what institution you are or even if you are in an institution. You can have parents that um, encourage you to achieve fantastic things in school and in life. Michaela? Yeah, no, I definitely agree with Ryan. Um, I know that our teachers um, often challenged us and they asked us questions that weren't only um, rewrite or copy and paste what you have learned, but they challenge you to think outside of the box. And I think that's what the exams also, they, they, they want you to be um, creative and uh, um, come up with solutions. So I think that is something, a skill that yeah. um, I've learned and I'm not sure I haven't um, done any of the other the um, public schools exams, but I'm sure that, yeah, I think it's mostly the teachers who cha have to challenge you and teach yeah. you these skills. Masana, what are your thoughts about that conversation about uh, private versus public? Well, with me, I've been in both public and private, and I do not think there's anyone that's superior to the other. They all work in different ways, you know. With public, I feel like we should understand that in classes, we are a lot more and teachers are catering to a larger number. So it tends to get a bit hard because we are so many in one class, in one grade, which kind of makes teachers seem as if they are not as good as private schools. But when we think about it, in private schools, it's smaller groups. In classes, you find that we are 20, meaning that teachers can give us so much more attention and put so much more pressure on us to help us achieve what we need to achieve. So I feel like there is no comparison between the two because they all cater to different amounts of students. Yeah. So I genuinely feel like it's, I agree with Ryan and Michaela. It's all about the teachers and how you work with the teachers and how they teach you to understand your work. So you have a little window to celebrate before you get into the next stage uh, of your life, which is your academic life. How are you celebrating? Uh, not at all. <laughs> Started working a while ago. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, I imagine. This is a, it's, it's a new chapter, so I, I tried not to focus too much on the book I just closed. The future is ahead. No need to... Wow, awesome. Michaela? <laughs> Well, I'm definitely having my favorite meal tonight. <laughs> so um, I'm going to just celebrate it with my family. And um, yeah, from then on, start preparing for, for university. Quick so. one, Masana. Um, with me, I can't wait to sleep. Like, it feels <laughs> like the wait is been lifted off. 
I can finally get a good night's rest. But <laughs> wow. other than that, I'll celebrate with my family and friends. And you deserve it. Thank you so much, guys, for coming through. Uh, Masana Nepalela is from Blue Hills and has just matriculated, had her distinctions, Ryan Snayman and Michaela Stahl from Health Makar College. Thank you so much, guys, Thank for coming so through much, to the guys. studio.